Speaking of the famous large-scale water conservancy projects in China, you may be the first to think of the Three Gorges project. Well, it is said that China also has a super water conservancy project concept, which is far more difficult than the Three Gorges project, and the budget investment may exceed 4 trillion yuan. If the construction is successful, it will greatly alleviate the water shortage problem in western China and turn the boundless desert into fertile land. This super project concept has been discussed constantly since its inception, and India even explicitly opposed this project. So what exactly is this project? Why hasn't it started yet? Besides, why does it anger India? Hi, welcome to Hot Topic Time, and let's move on to today's topic. One of the biggest challenges facing China's future development is water, which must support the country's 1.4 billion people and booming industries. Despite being one of the top five countries with the largest freshwater resources on a per capita basis, China faces serious water shortages which are further compounded by a highly uneven spatial distribution and precipitation. The densely populated north suffers from acute water shortages whereas the south is prone to severe floods. To optimize the allocation of water resources, China has embarked on the construction of a mega-engineering project, the South North Water Diversion Project, SNWD. 2. Dot expanding the world's largest water transfer project The project was first proposed in 1952 by Mao Zedong who concluded that the South has plenty of water, the North much less. If possible, the North should borrow a little from the South. And the SNWD does exactly that it diverts water from the South to the North along three routes, Eastern, Middle, and Western. The Western, and most controversial route, has not yet been built. In May 2021, Chinese President Xi Jinping announced that China will press ahead with the world's largest water diversion project. The Western Roots plans are split into two categories, modest plans from the government and ambitious proposals from scholars. The official plan for the Western Route links the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers across the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau to divert 17 billion cubic meters of water, approximately 7 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, to Gansu and neighboring provinces each year. Another proposal from 2017 on the Red Flag River was introduced by Qinghua Professor Wang Hao. It plans to annually divert 60 billion cubic meters of water from transboundary rivers on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, including the upstream of the Brahmaputra, Mekong, and Selween, to northwest China. This would create 133,333 square kilometers of arable land in Xinjiang and a 150,000 square kilometers greenbelt in the northwest. However, its feasibility has been questioned by academics and geographers. As a possible alternative to the western route, the Tianha project, the world's largest weather modification and artificial rainmaking system, was proposed by scientists from Tsinghua and Qinghai universities in 2015. The Tianha project uses glaciogenic cloud seeding to annually create 5 to 10 billion cubic meters of rain above northern China. It was included in Shanghai's 13th five-year plan. India has long worried over China's plans to divert the Brahmaputra, fearing it could cause water shortages. This is, however, a misperception. The official western route plans to divert waters from the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers, not from transnational rivers like the Brahmaputra. Additionally, these unofficial proposals are not being seriously considered by the central government. Now, let's see, why does China's unofficial proposal, the Red Flag River project, make India so nervous? Will it really hurt India's interests? The Hongxi River project will mainly use Brahmaputra, Nujiang and Lansong rivers as water sources, which are rich in water and low in utilization rate, and transfer water in the way of artesian flow throughout the whole process to provide water supply capacity for the vast northwest region. The project first takes water from around the big bend of Brahmaputra. After it joins with other water sources, it is necessary to dig a tunnel to enter the Lansong River after traveling about 60 kilometers. After about 43 kilometers, it merges into the Jinsha River, where it needs to continue to travel for 100 kilometers, and the water is introduced into Brahmaputra through the combination of water works such as tunnels, open channels and reservoirs. After passing through some major rivers, 
bypass the Wuxiling to the Hushi Corridor, and finally pass through the edge of the desert to the Hotan and Kashgar areas. Looking at this winding and long-distance Hongqi River project, many people said, can this really solve the problem of water use in the northwest? According to expert estimates, once the Hongqi River project is successfully constructed, the water that can be transported to the Yellow River can reach 60 billion cubic meters per year. This can almost reach half of the average runoff of the entire Yellow River. It can not only make use of hundreds of millions of farmland abandoned due to extreme water shortage along the Yellow River and improve China's agricultural productivity, the most important thing is to promote the economy along the Yellow River. Since the project will eventually pass through the edge of the desert, it may be possible to solve the problem of soil erosion nearby and further prevent the process of land desertification. The influx of water can improve the local climate for a long period of time in the future and improve the quality of the local ecological environment. There is even an opportunity to develop part of the desert into an oasis to develop tourism in the northwest. In fact, from the previous project concept, we can already feel the difficulty of the Hongqi River project. The total length of the entire project is about 6,188 kilometers, of which only a few hundred kilometers of natural rivers can be used, so the remaining nearly 6,000 kilometers of the project needs to be solved by China. Since then, the Hongqi River project will become one of the water conservancy projects with the largest amount of water diversion, the longest and the most difficult water diversion in the world. In addition, with a large altitude and drop, and it is located in an earthquake zone, so the construction process can easily trigger natural disasters. On top of that, it is also difficult for experts to assess the stability of the Hongqi River project's water transfer volume, despite an initial estimate of 60 billion cubic meters. But in fact, after analyzing the water source development of those rivers one by one, it is found that it is very difficult to achieve this goal. The data shows that the ideal water transfer volume that can be achieved each year can only reach about 44 billion cubic meters, which is only about 70% of the initial estimate. Of course, there are also some international issues that I cannot ignore, because several rivers included in the project plan will flow into India and other countries. Therefore, India pays great attention to the projects located in the upper reaches. Once China has related plans, the Indian media will mislead the Indian people with exaggerated remarks, which can easily intensify the contradiction between the two countries. In fact, China has explained it more than once. Take the Brahmaputra as an example. Although China is in the upper reaches, its engineering construction will not reduce their runoff. It can even effectively alleviate flooding in northeastern India, so they don't have to worry at all. Based on these problems, China has not dared to rashly carry out construction, so we can only hope that the engineering team can overcome these problems one by one and provide sufficient water for the northwest region as soon as possible. Okay, that's all for today. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.